There you go. Hey, everybody. <laughs> okay. So Sorry. This idiot does not know how to work a camera. So you, this is your first video with me doing a video on my camera, and I just set it up today. <laughs> and this one's being weird and awkward because I, she's on camera. No, not weird and awkward. I just feel like an idiot, like because I couldn't find the damn record button. <laughs> That's okay. I wouldn't have known what it was unless I looked it up. So. I'm not even doing nothing. I'm just looking at you. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look away. <laughs> so this is a video. Um... <laughs> Stop it. What? I shivered. <laughs> okay, wait on you. You got my laptop. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> so my next... Uh, series of videos will be doing training videos with my service dog and training Stormy but prior to me doing that I needed to explain to you about some of my training tools specifically one in particular that is considered very controversial so to speak <laughs> before I do I need to say that Every trainer trains differently. I'm not a professional trainer, however, I have had, I have worked with trainers when I was training Mina, and ideally, within the next two, three months, I will be working with trainers with Stormy as well. But prior to that, I do, because of experience with Mina, I do know a little bit of what I'm doing. But these are just advice videos so just to fair warn you but also if you do not agree with my training techniques or the training tools that I use that is well and fine but please respect the fact that I do that I am using these and that these are my dogs and this is how I choose to train them this is what works best for me it might not work best for you, but it works best for me. So please keep that in mind. Yeah. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> With that said, I'm going to tell you a little about the e-collar. So this is the case that it came in. Hopefully this video won't look stupid. <laughs> Quite frankly, because so this is the inside. <laughs> Um, and what kind of came with it is, for mine, I, it, came, it came with information about peering and the models and stuff like that. It came with a notice about possible metal allergies that your dog can have. An e-collar warranty registration. If you have an e-collar, especially with e-collar technologies, and you have a warranty on it, you should do it. They're pretty great. And then there's also a little manual. And this manual just has pretty much everything. Port notices, no notice, characteristics, package contents, device operation, charging batteries, turning your e-car on and off, blah, blah, blah. All that kind of junk. So... First and foremost, we have a little collar thing that can go with your remote. So this is what the remote looks like. And I will get onto the rest of this later. This can go on to clip here, or I find it personally better to use a little clip. You can just clip it to your belt or to a bag if you've got. I've been known to just freaking clip it to my shirt. I'm not gonna lie. Or I just clipped it right to my waist belt. And then this is what the e-collar itself looks like. Pretty simple, pretty easy. 
Now, with this, it also has some pieces and parts. So, I will take them out and show you. I have no idea what this little thing is. This right here is like a little screw that you can use. Oh, it's to screw these on. So, with the call, you got these two little receivers, receptors, that kind of, they go to, specifically, there's a muscle on your dog's neck. And you put these up against that muscle. And this little screw helps to tighten those. So, right now I have the big ones on, but with mine, there also came these little bitty small ones. So, I'm gonna show you these little small receptors. They're usually used for small dogs. And then this little tag thingy, I guess, whatever. So, I guess where you got it from, I don't know. Show off, I guess. Put your cookie, right? So then, put those away. So first, we're going to get into the e collar and the remote. So with the remote, you have a couple buttons. So. Back here you have an on and off slash light button. You have your port right here. So you need to make sure at all times that it is completely covered. Because this is water or water resistant. But if this is open like this, water can get in and it can destroy your device. So make sure that the flap is completely down. And this is where you charge. Um, I also have a charger somewhere over here. So to turn it on, all you do is you press the L button and you just hold it. So right here there is the dial comes on. When you go off, you just hold it as well. It goes a red button and it says off. Hold it, comes on. So you got your M, your 0C, and your 1D. Here on this side is T for timer so you can change from M to C and then you've got over here you have your S black button your S red button and then this is your dial and then obviously this is your receiver to the e call. So and then this is just the label this is company that I got this from, or with Nina, so, technically back here changes this from N, from C to N, I don't remember exactly what that does, it's not really something we use, we just press this button, the black button. And the red button is considered for only emergencies. Black button, the black thing here goes from, you just turn it, and it goes from 0 all the way up to 100. And then, so when you press this button, it goes to here, and then this goes to the dog. It, it uh, sends signal to the device to pretty much give it doesn't it's not like a shock collar. E collars are not like a shock collar. They are not meant to harm your dog. It literally is only meant to provide stimulation to the muscle to get your dog's attention. It doesn't hurt them. And obviously going up to 100 doesn't feel great to the dog, but you should be training on a 100. Usually, typically, we train at about a 12. At least on Nina, she listens at about 
about a 12, sometimes less, sometimes more, depending on her level of stubbornness. Stormy listens at about a, what, a freaking 20? Yeah. Yeah, Stormy listens at about a 20 or more, or a little higher, but no more than, no, <laughs> no more than about 40. Sometimes, sometimes he gets really stubborn, but that is literally all because he's been stubborn. So, <laughs> yeah. So if you turn on, this turns on the remote, but it doesn't turn on the e-collar. So to turn on the e-collar, see this little black button? Well, it's not even a button, but little black dot. And then right here you've got a little red dot. All you do is you tap them, and you see a green light grow. So that means the e-collar is turned on. So with this one, I think typically these come with different little, um, collars. This is the one that I bought that was offered to me through, um, offered to train, or, uh, hammers to buy through Nina's, um, trainers. I like this one because you can set it here, and then I cut it obviously this fits her perfectly. This right here is elastic so it allows it to fit perfectly to her neck and then all I have to do is just clip it. Since she's not going to grow, this works perfectly for me. The box does come off so I can remove it from this obviously. Um, to charge it is this little thing here. And then I can put charge this through here and then charge here. The charger has two splits so that I can charge both at the same time. Um, same thing with this. You have to make sure that you keep it completely closed, otherwise water can get in. <laughs> um, one warning caution that I do have is that if your dog's neck is wet, or if your dog is really wet. You cannot use the e-collar, so keep that in mind. But if your dog is dry, the neck is fine, you can use it. Um, if you do choose to use the e-collar, then you need to kind of be weary about their neck, because like with Nina, um, she got a little sensitive on her neck, and it can leave little red marks, little irritated little spots, and if you leave it on too long, it can even create kind of like little wounds. Or your dog will get really, like, the spots will itch so much and they'll create wounds itching it. So, the e-collar is meant as a training tool. It's not meant to stay on all of the time. And if you use it every day, then my best advice is maybe one day, use it on the right side. Next day, use it on the left side. Just make sure you're switching it or switch it halfway throughout the day. If you're using it um, all day, you know, like maybe I'll say half in the morning, you know, have it on the right side. On the next day, later that night, have it on the left. Just whatever works and suits for you. Just bear in mind your dog could be sensitive to it. <laughs> nice, honey. Oh, you're welcome. This is what I look like. This is what I look like. <laughs> I love you too, darling. I love you. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So currently, this fits for Stormy as well. Um, it's a slightly little bit big, which means we have to adjust it a lot. You want it to fit quite perfectly. You don't want it to tie on your dog's neck, but you do want it to where it, it can't move. You understand? Unfortunately, it does move on his neck a little bit. We do use it on him. 
Um, well, I do use it on. But we do make sure to adjust it. Nina's, obviously this is fit perfectly to her neck. Stormy, as he gets older, we're gonna have to get him his own e-collar. And he will definitely grow into it. He's already a big boy. So, yes. So anyway, so just to prove that it doesn't hurt the dog, we made sure before we even used it to test it. For me, I could feel it at a 12. That's where I started to feel the stem. My wife, who's oh so silly, wanted it to <laughs> take no, it from no, no, zero no, to no, 100. No, <laughs> no ma'am. Leanna said nope. 100 does not feel great. It does not. At but all. you're not supposed to use it at 100. There's no reason to use it at 100. <laughs> now, I will say, when you are training with this, you want to use it at, I, ideally, usually people do it. You're supposed to kind of do it like this. This is how my trainers taught me to do it. And that way you can just kind of easily. You know, just easily go and oh, I guess like this. You're supposed to do it like this, or like this, I should think. In this hand, just like this, so that you can press these buttons here and move the dial as needed. For me, it doesn't work. I can't comprehend that, and that's probably because I'm autistic. So I personally hold it like this and move the dial as needed. So usually you start at, I started at about, usually about a, about a 12 actually, about a 8 or 12. And then as needed, I dial it up. And then you, the appropriate way to use it is you don't start at a high number. You literally just start at a small number and you go up as needed. You keep repeating the command that you want your dog to listen to and then you slowly dial it up and press the red button. The black button, not the red. I'm sure you're not pressing the red. See, the reason why is because the black button provides a stim, I think. It only lasts like a second. Second or five seconds. Okay. So it's a very short term stim. The red button provides a 10 second stim. And it is literally only for emergency uses. So this is great. This button is great. For if you have a dog like Nina, who is a runner. If you know anything about Huskies, Huskies have a tendency to have very high prey drive. So like she says she sees squirrel she bolts or she just is being bratty she will bolt and she has bolted before this has saved her life this e-car has saved her life before because she's tried to bolt multiple times into oncoming traffic so in the case of an emergency and this is only an emergency I have and this is what you're supposed to do dial it up don't even worry about the freaking number just dial it up don't Try not, don't, don't dial it up too high, but dial it up and just hit that red button as fast as you can. Be mindful that when you do, it will send your dog into what's called a shutdown mode. So, what that means is, I've had to do it with Nina. So, it means that A, they're not going to want to do anything for you. So training's done. It's out of the question for the day. You're not going to be able to use the e-collar either. So if they have a crate, in the crate, let them cool off, let them calm down. Because it's kind of going to send them into like a shock mode. It's just shut down. They're going to completely shut down. Hmm. Quite literally. Because it 
doesn't feel good to them. But the point of it is, is to save their lives. So, idea is, is like if she does go bolting, and this is what I have done, she's bolted off, and right before she could hit, hit out there, I dialed it up and I hit that emergency button, and it stopped her dead in her tracks. As she, <laughs> you're running the other direction, or just, she's also stopped dead in her tracks, and she let up out a couple yelps, but it gave me enough time to get over there really quick, to run over there quick enough to grab her and take her inside. Versus where if I didn't do it and I didn't have it, she would be dead because she would have been hit by a car. So that's a great tool to have. But if you're just training, keep it on a low number. And you just slowly go up. So like for example, if I'm working sit, I will say sit without using it. And then I will personally I repeat it again. I'll say sit. If they don't sit, I'll say sit and I'll hit the black button one time. Don't work, I'll say sit. And you just keep doing that and you'll start dialing it up very slowly. You just keep dialing up and say sit, sit, sit until your dog finally does. Um, if you're using a correction, full correction, because this is great for corrections too. So like, you know, Nina and Stormy like to jump up on people, or if you're just trying to correct other bad behaviors, you know, skipping the counters, anything like that, whatever you need, you can set it to a little bit of a higher number, and that's what I do. It's usually at a 12, so depending on what it is, if it's something simple, I'll just, you know, hit that hit the button, I won't change the number, but if it's something big, you know, and I know that their adrenaline's pumping, I hit that, I turn it just a little and hit the button, because that kind of lets me know, oh hey, I'm being bad, I don't need to do that, bad, and they stop what they're doing, usually, they do it again, you know, just hit the button, they will stop, just hit the button at the same time you say off, or leave it, whatever word you choose to use, that means, no, bad, don't do that. So that's how you work with that training. And you need to do it every time. So for me, I'll either say leave it or off. I usually say off. <laughs> um, sorry. I'm currently uploading a video as we think. So. Yes, so that's, that's cool. Um, if you're asking my personal favorite thing that I like to train using the e collar is heel. Um, for you can use all kinds of different tools. There's so many tools. This tool, this is this video is mainly just about the e collar, um, and that's what I like. That's what I mainly like to use. You do need to remember that <coughs> you need to show your dog how to do what you're asking prior to using the e-collar so remember that so for example with sit you need to work sit first or like with heel with heel we took stormy to the park and actually same with Nina. took them to the park and we worked with them you know just introduced it like Nina's trainers introduced it to her first and then once she got a hang of it, then you incorporate the e-collar to keep it consistent. So with Stormy, he actually got it pretty quick, a whole lot faster than Nina did. So we took him to the park, we worked with, we introduced him, where well, that made my arm hurt, made her arm hurt, because you we had to hold him to our side to make sure that he stays on whatever side. Some people do teach their dogs to heal both sides, some people teach left, some people teach right. Um, it's more common than not that people use do the left side. I personally train my dogs to heal to the right as you may or may not have seen in previous videos.
with Hina. <clears throat> so first we did that and then after actually after the third time he's pretty much gotten the hint of it all so he's actually already got it and under wraps so pretty cool um Another great thing that I like about the collar is that this allows my dogs to be off leash. And this is why and this is why my dogs like the collar. They don't particularly love it, but they like it. They like the freedom that comes with it. So because Nina is a bolter, it allows me to put on like a traffic leash, it's a short leash. Um, hook to her neck because in my state we do have leash laws. You have to have your dog leashed if it's out outside. You have to have your dog leashed, at least if you're not on your real property. Um, so we can put that on there and put the e collar on her and let her run around pretty much free, leash free, because technically this is a leash. We still have all control of our dog. Um, in some states, you actually don't even have to have the leash it, because this actually counts as a leash itself. Unfortunately, it doesn't in my state, but which is why we put the small traffic leash on her because that is a leash. We do put it on Stormy as well, but he has a better recall and he listens a lot better than Nina does. He doesn't, uh, Bolt like she does, and if we tell him to come here, he knows to come here. So, this is mainly great for Nina, but it also means like if park, we can do that too. Um, I also love to use this as a correction. So, like if I'm work um, working my dogs, then I can keep them in an off leash hill but still correct their heel and keep them where I want them. It helps to perfect and refine your heel. So that that's great. Um, so when I was working in a, you will see in her videos that I did have a traffic leash on her, but I had her completely off leash. But I did have this on there, just in case. So if some, for some reason she got spooked, I could still control her. Same with Stormy. I'll be doing the same thing with Stormy. So, with that said, I'm going to end this video. If you all have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them down below in the comment section. If you have any suggestions on videos or training techniques that you'd like to see, then Please suggest them. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and to this video so that you can stay tuned to our channel. Do you have anything to add in your life? I don't think you covered it all. Did I? I think. I don't know. I've never had mine on YouTube channel. I don't know. Oh, well, fine. I mean. <laughs> I really don't know. Oh, yeah. One more thing. You want to show them how it goes on your dog? Before we end this, actually. It's kind of hard to show them. No, I'll show them. I'll, I'll hold the camera if you put it on Nina. So, we'll do a test run. We're going to put this on Nina just to show you how it should look. Come here, husband. Alright. Sit, Pickle. Sit. You sit. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, there's my beautiful husky girl. And currently, Lexi is putting on the e collar. So, first thing you do is you move up 
their regular collar because you, you never want to hook the leash to their e-collar. You want to hook it to their regular collar. Now I know it looks like it's ridiculously tight, but it actually isn't. She has plenty of room to breathe. He's a Oh, I know. I know. Nina's not a particular fan of the e-collar. She likes to run free though. So you just put it to the muscle on the side. Yep. So that's all you do. Then you just let your dog do do their thing. Another cool thing, by the way, while I'm at it is come here focus okay I don't want focus die <laughs> she said nope okay so with the on and off light button here you can press that and it does different things on the e collar when you have your dog out at night so you can not a, you just press it once and if I think the, press it once and it starts flashing because there's actually a light right where the green light flashes it'll actually flash white or you can turn it on permanently if you press it again and yeah, no. that will look at my pretty girl and that will so turn it on permanently no treat <laughs> Okay. Okay. Say goodbye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Hope you enjoy this video. Oh, God. You got that on video. Oh, fuck. I did, too. <laughs>